The doctor's office smelled of disinfectant and latex, and the protective paper covering the examination table crinkled under her bare legs. Nora Lindstrom tugged at the cloth gown that kept slipping off her shoulder and drew in a wheezing breath. The rattle in her chest echoed in the stillness of the space. Why doctor's offices made appointments for patients was beyond her, since they never seemed to keep to the schedule. Nora had half a mind to leave, although in truth, she had nowhere else she needed to be these days. You used to be more understanding, old girl, she mumbled. Old age has made you impatient and priggish. The door opened and a short, handsome, neatly bearded man in a lab coat walked in. Nora smiled at her old friend. Sorry to have kept you waiting, Dr. Lindstrom. Seems everyone picked today to come down with the flu. How long have we known each other, Daniel? To you, I'm not Dr. Lindstrom. I'm just Nora. And I was going to scold you for making me late for my disco dance lesson, but I've decided to forgive you. Disco went out in the 80s, Nora. Hip-hop is all the rage now. Then you saved me from an indignity, and I should thank you. Hip-hop? I tried to do that once. Broke the darned hip and needed a month in a skilled nursing facility. He smiled warmly as he approached with a stethoscope. Seriously, how kids call that stuff music is beyond me. Then again... I stopped listening to music when the Beatles broke up. I'm glad to see you haven't lost your sense of humor. It's practically all I have left. <laughs> I doubt that. He warmed the instrument in his hand. Let me take a listen to your chest. Careful, it might blow out your eardrum. He listened as she breathed in and out on cue. When he was done, he sat on a wheeled stool to face her. You have your serious face on, Daniel. He frowned. I'm afraid this is serious. I know what you're going to say. She held up a shaky hand to forestall his next words. It's okay. I'm one hundred years old, and I'm not afraid of death. I've had a good long life. Heck, I've outlived everyone I know. About time I went to join them. You are a marvel. You teach me more about life every time I see you. Which is far too often lately, if you ask me, she said. No offense. None taken. She felt the cough bubble up in her chest before it exploded forth, shaking her frail form. When she pulled her hand away from her mouth, it was liberally coated with blood. Let me get that, he said. His kind eyes reflected concern and sadness as he gently cleaned her hands and around her mouth. Thank you. The words came out as a rasp as she struggled to catch her breath. Have you given more thought to what we talked about last week? You need both a health care proxy and a durable power of attorney in place. Nora shook her head. I told you before. I trust you to make the decisions for me. And I told you before, no can do. You must have someone you can trust to make life decisions on your behalf. She cast her eyes downward. It had been 35 years since that last heated discussion with her brother and his son and daughter-in-law. 35 years since she kissed 10-year-old Diana on the forehead as her daddy pried her little fingers off Nora's pant leg. I'll always be with you in your heart, Diana. Carry me there, she had whispered. You can't go. I won't let you, Diana pleaded. You're my best friend. I love you, Diana. Always remember that. Nora couldn't bear to look back at the girl's tear-stained face. That was the last time she'd seen her great-niece. More precisely, it was the last time Diana had seen her, Nora corrected herself. After all, she'd continued to keep a watchful eye on Diana from a distance. How would Diana react now if Nora or her lawyer reached out and told her Nora was dying and needed her?